Let's get this party started. Unit seven progress check for your response part A. Number two, they give us this differential equation and tell us to sketch a slope field for the nine points that are indicated. And we are going out to negative one, positive one, positive one, negative one. Okay, um, I'm gonna go for the obvious first. Anytime with the product of two factors, anytime either number either factor is equal to zero, then we get zero. So at zero, zero, our slope is zero. At um, one, zero, our slope is zero. At negative one, zero, our slope is zero. Then if we raise zero to the fourth power, we have zero. So we're gonna have zero on both axes. And then we just do the math for the other one. So if I plugged in one, one, one times one to the fourth is still one. Um, one times Oh, one times negative one to the fourth. Negative one to the fourth is still, well, one. And then over here, if we were to plug in negative values for x, we're still going to, we're gonna have negatives here, negative here, but then when we have a one to the fourth, we get a positive. We have a negative one to the fourth, we still get a positive, so we have negative one times positive one on both of those. There we go. So that is our slope field, and the way the scoring went on this was they would give you um, credit for the zero slopes, and then they gave you another point for getting those four right. All right, let's move on to part B, which asks us to find the second derivative, and then it goes a little bit further into that, and it tells us to talk about what we know in quadrant two. So let's read it. <clears throat> find the second derivative in terms of x and y. Determine the concavity of all solution curves for the given differential equation in quadrant two. Give reasons for your answer. Okay, well, second derivative determines concavity. We know that. Let's just find the second derivative first. So, um, Oh, let's bring the work over here. We have space. So B is, uh, well, all right. Let's, let's, let's start by taking the derivative of that. So the second derivative, implicit differentiation now, is going to be, well, product rule. So um, F prime, one, G plus F, and then G prime. So the derivative of Y to the fourth would be four Y to the third, and then we would also multiply by dy dx. And how do you know? Well, because it's implicit differentiation, we're taking the derivative of the derivative with respect to x. So we need to have this term in there. So, um, or that factor in there in this case. So we will continue to simplify this. So we have y to the fourth plus, let's rearrange this, 4xy to the third dy dx. Well, dy dx, don't leave dy dx in there. You know what dy dx is, it's this. It's x, y to the fourth, right? So let's keep going. It is y to the fourth plus four. Now we just use our algebra one skills, x squared and y to the seventh. There we go, we found it. That is our second derivative. But now let's read a little further into the actual question. So determine the concavity of all solution curves for the given differential equation in quadrant two. All right, give a reason for your answer. Well, concavity, so concave up or concave down, depending on the sign of the second derivative. So let's think about what happens in quadrant two. This is quadrant two. Uh, quadrant two, we have negative x values and positive y values. All right, let's put this into words. Um, in quadrant two, in quadrant two, x is negative and y is positive. So, okay, all right, let's start thinking about what's about to happen next. If I plug in negative x values, all right, I'll plug in a negative there and I square it. So I have, I have a positive so far. There's a positive right here. And then I plug in positive y values. So I have positive plus positive four times positive, we just decided, times positive. We got nothing but positive here. So the second derivative is always positive in this quadrant. Therefore, all solution curves, solution curves means that whatever I would draw through here that follows the pattern of the, the slope field. Anyway, all solution curves, depending on the C value. All solution curves in quadrant two feel free to abbreviate, are con, concave up. That's part two, or part B. 
All right, quadrant two. Here it goes, part C. Now things get a little bit tricky, <clears throat> but not too bad. Find the particular solution, y equals f of x. Let's just stop right there. They gave us a differential equation, and they're asking us to solve it for y, like specifically solve it for y. And then they gave us an initial condition. And initial, often we think of like, well, then x equals zero. Well, they gave us some place to start, and this is our starting place. So let's figure it out. I'm gonna start here, just so we'll have it. That's a, that y didn't turn out like I wanted it to. There. That's all better. dy over dx equals xy to the fourth. Okay, let's separate our variables. We will bring our dx up, we'll bring our y to the fourth down. dy over y to the fourth equals x dx. We are ready to integrate. Integrate this, integrate that, and one half x squared plus c on this side. And on this side, we would have, well, don't call it natural log. You're not dividing by something to the first power. You're dividing by something to the fourth power. If it helps, you can treat this as if it was, and I'm bringing my work over here, the integral of y to the negative four. You don't have to write this. It's just my way of helping to explain it. We will add one to the exponent. Some of these are hard to visualize. And then old coefficient divided by new exponent. There we go. Personal opinion. At this point, I like to find C. Before I start moving things around, that's just what I do. That's how I roll. After years of teaching it, I just find it to be the best thing to do. So I'm going to use this information that they gave me, and I'm going to find C, and then we'll go from there. We'll back up, and we'll solve it for Y. We're not done until we've solved for Y. <coughs> Excuse me. So negative one-third of negative one to the negative three equals one-half times four squared plus c. We're gonna solve it for c. And it's not gonna be that bad. Let's see, negative one to the negative third, that'd be, well, negative one to the third, but that'd be in the denominator. That gives me, uh, all right, here we go. Negative one to the third is negative one, but it's in the denominator, so we have a negative one still. Negative one-third times negative one is positive one-third equals uh, 16, half of that would be 8, plus C. And so we'll have C equals, well, negative 8 plus a third. And that is going to, using a little bit of mathematical magic here, it's going to give me negative 23 over 3. Okay? Now, we're not done. We're not, we're not finished yet. They want us to solve for Y. They said so. Why did they say so? Y equals F of X. Solve it. So let's solve it. Put squiggly lines to separate all my work. That's just what I do. Um, I'm going to start back here. Oops, here, and that should be a three, not a two. Let's fix that. Y to the negative three equals one half x squared plus c. Let's solve this thing for y. Okay. I think we can uh, multiply by negative three. That'll wipe out that fraction. That'll make my life a little bit easier. There's that. So multiply by negative three. That gives me negative three halves x squared. Uh, multiply by negative three here. That gives me positive 23. That works very conveniently here. Um, you might be tempted to take the negative cube root. Don't play that game. Don't do that. That's just gross. Um, what I really have here is this. That's, that's really what I'm dealing with, just to be clear. Um, I need to get y in the numerator. I need to, not mathematical language here, but I need to flip this side over, so I need to flip this side over. Flip over the whole side. So y cubed equals, I reciprocate this side, I reciprocate this side. Disgusting as it may look, I'm just reciprocating it. 23, there we go. And now I'm ready to cube root it. So y equals, we're going to call it f of x equals, because now we really have, we've solved this thing. You could say y equals if you want to. You could call it f of x. Either way, cube root of everything that was just written. 1 over negative 3 over 2x squared plus 23. We have solved it.